take it away. Oh my goodness. Welcome everyone. Let me make sure. Hi, it's me, Dave McGowan. Thank you so much for joining us uh, here at Farpoint. We're going to close out today with a little bit of extra nerdy stand-up comedy. It's going to be exciting. Uh, this is this is my version of Ocean's Eleven if, if George Clooney was played by uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, which get, <laughs> get on that Hollywood. I want to see that. Um, you're all muted. If you uh, would, if you have video and you feel comfortable, we'd love to see your faces. Uh, if you feel like you're not in a place that has uh, dogs or jackhammers or uh, Cuisinarts, please let us know. We'd love to unmute you and hear your laughter. Uh, it, it's what it's what feeds us, uh, especially our Borg. So, I'll give everybody just a couple more minutes to kind of filter in. And uh, we will start our comedy show for the evening. Oh, good. Okay. That's a good thing I changed. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's being really quiet. <laughs> I feel like I should have like two Ferengis walk into a bar jokes for times like this. Just <laughs> some random, random patter. Everyone's <laughs> afraid of their feelings. <laughs> I've, I've got a good Ferengi and a bar joke for the moment, if, I don't, if you don't oh, mind. Oh, absolutely. Kind of a dad joke. But uh, Karl Marx walks into Quark's and, uh, and Worf says to Quark, you know he's going to start an argument with you, right? And Quark says, "Yeah, but I'm Latin him." <laughs> oh God! <laughs> yeah, definitely a dad. Oh God! <laughs> this is a Chief O'Brien joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got plenty of people. Uh, we're going to get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome again. Uh, if I didn't welcome you earlier to Farpoint and Charnox Comedy Cabaret, am I going to pick the right shoulder? I did, except my finger's missing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we have our first transporter accident of the evening. Uh, you hate to see it. Uh, my name is Dave McOwen. Uh, we are here to do some nerdy, nerdy comedy for you. If you couldn't tell uh, from my outfit and the backdrop and everything about Farpoint. Uh, I, am, I am coming to you in high definition. I have a new webcam, which uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, nobody needs to see this <laughs> more clearly. I feel, that's Amazon. I feel like Amazon let me down because they know everything about me, right? No one came up in chat and said, oh, hi, uh, we see you wanna get a new webcam uh it says here that your last order was uh three pairs of extra large sweatpants and 12 pounds of beef jerky uh you sure you sure you're ready for 4k there sport <laughs> no i'm not um i've been reading so catching up on news uh i read i read a journal article uh where the headline was monkeys in panama have entered the stone age which is that's very interesting uh, it is more interesting if you are my brain and you read it as monkeys in pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> Not as scientifically accurate, but it's more whimsical. <laughs> so I'm going to keep with that one. Uh, the other big thing recently, so uh, the stock price of games, GameStop went through the roof because of nerds on Reddit, which is, that is also very exciting. Uh, I cashed out my 401k and bought 47 million shares of uh, Betamax, Netscape, and MySpace. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'm doing that right. Uh, and I, I apologize if you're too young to get those references. I meant the fire Festival. <laughs> Still works. Honestly, I'm just waiting for all these vintage Star Wars action figures to finally pay off. 
that's my real retirement plan. <laughs> Uh, the other, I don't, I doubt I need to tell any of you that Perseverance landed successfully on Mars on Thursday, which, oh my goodness, that was so, ex it's continuing the most expensive game of Where's Waldo in history. Mm -hmm. yep. We're going to find him. <laughs> um, I do have friends who work at, at NASA, uh, and they have to go into the building and they have contractors and uh, one of them wasn't wearing a mask and. So they said, hey, uh, you know, could you got to cause COVID and put a mask on. And their response was, oh, you're one of them believers, huh? <laughs> I, in, in, in science? <laughs> you're at NASA. <laughs> Read the room. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, we'll get into other nerdy stuff. Uh, fear is the mind killer. <laughs> Yes. Normally, this is the part of the show where I ask people if they know where that reference is from. I don't have to. <laughs> you know that it's Frank yes. Herbert's Dune. Uh, and listen, with all due respect to Frank, I disagree. I do not think that fear is the mind killer. I, I think Trader Joe's is the mind killer. <laughs> yeah, because I have never been afraid and bought $167 worth of groceries I did not need. <laughs> <laughs> way, way too much kale. Uh, I once I once told that joke and I accidentally said Frank Miller's Dune and I got to be honest, I'm way more excited to see that. <laughs> right? The planet was dry, drier than a wino after three days in Sing Sing. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Um. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna end tonight with, uh, with my one celebrity impression, uh, which is Patrick Stewart. Now there's a catch. I, I can't really do him speaking. Like it's fine. It's not great. I, I realized that I can do a, a decent impression of him singing the national anthem. Now I know you have questions. We don't have time to get into them. <laughs> uh, so, so guys, gals, and other pals, please absolutely do not stand uh, for this comedic rendition of Captain Picard, Sir Patrick Stewart, singing the national anthem. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Oh, say can you see? That's pretty good, right? <laughs> By the dawn's early light. Remember, he's an actor, not a singer. What so proudly we hailed. He's British. <laughs> At the twi- You know, I'm going to skip a bit. Oh, say does that star spang gold. Shakespearean actor. Banner yet wave. Let's be honest, even at Farpoint, there's no way when you came here tonight, you thought this is what you were going to see. <laughs> oh, the land of the free. Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> And the home of the brave. That worked really well. I love how the background went away. That's never happened before. Oh, thank you so much. With apologies to Will Wheaton, wherever he is. I'm so sorry, Will. I know you hate that. Very nice. Uh, we have a great show. We're going to bring up our other comics. Uh, your first comic tonight is from Philadelphia, which is great. Uh, she she has a better costume than I do, which I'm a little mad about. Not really. It's awesome. Uh, she also has a book. Pick up her book. It's called Smile and Walk Away. I think she's going to put the link in the chat a little bit later. Please give a huge, huge welcome to Danny Rydell. Thank you very much. I am so happy to be here today because let me tell you, usually when I try to tell nerdy jokes, 
to a, like most audiences, it is like trying to give a TED talk about Marxism on Ferenginar. It just. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I realized, you know, fantasy football and March Madness is that this is just Dungeons and Dragons for jocks, right? Am I understanding <laughs> properly? Yeah, that's what I thought. And I really wish I was at this convention in person. I really, really wish that. I, I'm starting to feel every time I do this a bit like I'm making a video hostage diary now like <laughs> it is still 2020 the date is december 82nd <laughs> computer and <end> program <laughs> you 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 develop problems when when you are in the house in a quarantine all day that you never ever thought you'd have I never thought that I would have the following problem. You may have noticed I am dressed up as seven, seven of nine. <laughs> One reason for this is that my, my TNG era Starfleet uniform, when on my body, disappears against a green screen and you can see through me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely never expected to have that problem ever in life. But you know what? Over some alternatives, I'll take it. I, I've been trying to really make the best of this time. Um, as you may or may not have noticed if I've turned to the side at any point yet, uh, I am in fact Jewish. And uh, my husband and I celebrated Hanukkah this year. And I wanted to really teach him how to celebrate Hanukkah traditionally. And so I, I started running through the, the, the prayer with him that you sing while lighting the menorah. I got as far as Baruch Atah Adonai, and he goes, wow, your Klingon is getting really good. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I have a, my husband is awesome and it, it's, it's come to my attention that that might be bad for my comedy career. So I, I usually just refer to my husband as my first husband. He, uh, he, he's amazing, but we do, we have some communication issues. Uh, it, it's it's not really anyone's fault. It's just that my husband's first language isn't isn't English. He's it's C sharp. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, I'm 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 kidding, of course. I, I he's not from here, and they don't write in C sharp on Vulcan. <laughs> when we argue, it is really it is like Sarek and Amanda style, like. And which means naturally I lose <laughs> every time we argue about anything, his Vulcan sensitivities inevitably triumph and I am forced to apologize and say, baby, I love you. I'm sorry. I got emotional. I love you. And he just goes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I yell at him for switching franchises. <laughs> 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 but there, there are more reasons that I chose oh, to be yeah. seven of nine today. One is so that I could say fun will now commence. <laughs> and another is that I really resonate with seven of nine. I feel like she, she had a really rough childhood. And I think that seven of nine is how fairy tale princesses would have turned out in real life instead of in like Disney films. <laughs> like Snow White's stepmother resorted to murder for hire. Cinderella's stepmother imprisoned her and denied her her estate. Rapunzel's mother, yada, yada, yada. And Seven of Nine's parents drug her to the Delta Quadrant. <laughs> specifically to, who does that? Who does that with a little kid, you guys? <laughs> Who takes a kid to meet the book? Well, actually, it's kind of kind of like everybody, actually. Remember a thing called high school? <laughs> yeah. Like, no wonder everyone's worst nightmare is forced conformity. My God. <laughs> like, I guess high school, high school is like the non-alcoholic beer version of the Borg. Like, it's... <laughs> 
it tastes the same but doesn't permanently mess up your insides? <laughs> or, or, or maybe it does, depending on where you went to high school. I, I don't know, but I uh, just, no, I, I resonate with her because I, I really feel like after the childhood she had, Seven of Nine would absolutely be a stand-up comedian <laughs> without question. Yeah. But uh, I also resonate with her because it, it, who's seen Star Trek Picard? Yes. Seven of Nine and I have a big thing in common on that program, and that is that she likes to drink alcohol a lot. Uh, and I, I am a recovering alcoholic, um, although I prefer the more flattering term, inactive lush. I <laughs> have been sober for two and a half years. Thank you very much. I uh, got sober in August of 2019. If you're doing the subtraction, I said what I said. Sobriety time accrued in 2020 earns double points. <laughs> but it's it's been really really hard and like star trek is one of these things that has kept me sober you know like I, I i read the books i watch the show it's so uplifting i i read i i read some books though before that one in particular i am not spock by leonard nimoy which was part of his autobiography see with that one <laughs> I didn't read that so much for support as I did for instructions on how to get away with sneaking alcohol into work. <laughs> Cause he was great at it. He was amazing at it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that my, my uh, water bottles full of vodka days inside my cubicle. Mm. You know, that was kind of like being assimilated by the Borg. <laughs> being in a cubicle but uh no I, I i just one day thought to myself you know what if uh leonard nimoy can get sober if carrie fisher can get sober <clears throat> i guess i can get sober <laughs> it was bad though i mean i i i was like one glass of canar away from being mourn <laughs> <laughs> but you know i woke up one day and like my liver yelled at me. My liver was just like, <laughs> like, hey, you know, I have a day job, right? <laughs> <laughs> I had made myself my favorite morning beverage, which is a Kentucky coffee. If you've never had one, it's delicious. Try it. The recipe is simple. It's a bottle of Maker's Mark with a bendy straw in it. And <laughs> <laughs> my liver goes, please, it's 10 o'clock in the morning and I have a wife and kidneys to support. <laughs> I can't spend my whole lunch break metabolizing your breakfast whiskey. <laughs> By the way, you know, Leonard Nimoy's liver got to retire early. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, yeah, well, uh, Leonard Nimoy's liver was getting paid a lot more. <laughs> You're getting 70 cents on the dollar. <laughs> With the Federation <laughs> credit, as it were. <laughs> which, which reminds me. So when Lieutenant Uhura was negotiating over the purchase of a Tribble, I'm pretty freaking sure that that was Gene Roddenberry letting us know about Bitcoin way far in advance. <laughs> <laughs> none of us listened. Maybe not none of us, but I'm not, I won't ask. Maybe not none of us, but... <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I've tried to tell jokes about Bitcoin to some people and... Once again, you know, it's that whole feeling of Marxist on Ferenginar. It's like, I just can't do this. But uh, no, I, I, I really, really am happy to be here to tell jokes about things like allegories for people who know what the word allegory means. Um, <laughs> like, come on, we all, we all saw Tribbles and knew that that was Gene Roddenberry telling us about the importance of spaying and neutering, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bob Barker's message was too literal and it was not getting through. <laughs> we needed a good allegory. Yeah. Oh. But, uh, you know, I, I really have just been wondering one thing and uh, hoping to get, get all your opinions on it, on this kind of a shower thought, I guess. Do you think on Deep Space Nine, 
they called Karen's Caicos. <laughs> 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 uh, everybody i have been seven of nine or danny rydell and it's been a pleasure to be here uh live long and prosper Woo! thank you very much <laughs> oh keep it going for danny rydell everybody nice. i've never been happier that the borg assimilated the spandex system <laughs> you look fantastic <laughs> uh so yeah so uh check her out online check out her book i'm she'll be dropping a link in the chat we're gonna keep it going uh our next comic slightly different kind of nerd maybe even a geek it's very that venn diagram gets very contentious very quickly uh but he is a great comic he's the founder of the geek comedy tour here in dc and lots of places pre please give a big welcome to chris Baralik. Uh, thank you guys for coming out and showing up um, and making the effort to sit in front of your computers. Um, <laughs> I, I had a weird day. Um, I took a long, hard look in the mirror today. Let me take my hat off and exemplify it. And I realized that I just look like Peter Parker if he was bitten by an ordinary spider. There's... <laughs> There's just no powers or strength or abilities. There's just me wishing that puberty would finish. Um, <laughs> so as you can see from the background, um, I, I bought my sixth and seventh collector's grade lightsabers recently. Woo! Yeah. And I feel like somewhere, and this is presupposing a lot, there's a Back to the Future-esque picture of a family I'm supposed to have. <laughs> And it, multiple kids, beautiful wife, and with every Star Wars collector collectible item I buy, part of them just fades away. You know, like, uh, <laughs> like my next lightsaber, my my son's left arm just goes kaput, and you know, and uh, you know, just um, uh, my my additional darth vader collectibles, uh, my my daughter's head disappears, and at at some point. <laughs> Like whatever wife I'm supposed to have is just gonna be, gonna be replaced by a beautiful one three thousandth scale Death Star, and there's <laughs> nothing I'm doing about it. Um, I just literally today I just got the second Pfizer shot, um, and I, I'm I'm happy for it. I'm grateful, but of course you you have your friends and you have people who are worried about the about the vaccine, and it's like oh I don't know what's in it. Like I'm a scientist suddenly. Um, and all, all I can say is, if you ever went to a friend's birthday party when nine year, when you were nine years old, and that birthday party was at Chuck E. Cheese, and you dove to the bottom of the ball pit and came back up, you don't have to worry about anything that's in the vaccine. Like, if you enjoyed McDonald's orange drink as a child, slurping down liquid fiberglass, I wouldn't worry too much. This... This may be a little bit too dark and personal. Um, does anyone else here feel feel that manatees are just really fat, lazy stoner dolphins? Or <laughs> is that just me? Like they won't give you a ride to the airport. They just eat Cheetos. They keep hitting on your sister in front of you. Um, so I uh, went to the Coin Star machine at Giant Today, ladies. Um, <laughs> And the thing is, like, they've added new options to the Coinstar machine. You can do new Coinstar stuff with your Coinstar money. Uh, they've got, like, three options now. You can you can turn your coins into paper money and feel like this functioning adult. That's cool. You can put your Coinstar balance towards your groceries, and it's like, okay, that's good. But the new option is that you can now donate your Coinstar money to the poor. And it's like, look, Coinstar, I am the poor. <laughs> and that's why I'm at the Coinstar star machine in the first place <laughs> wearing a goodwill tuxedo and a monocle and a snorkel <laughs> because we're classy on a saturday i love video games but i feel like there are times where video games turn me into sort of a jerk when, like whenever your friends who are a couple and they just have a new baby and they post the very first pictures of their new baby on facebook and they they put in like oh this this is our beautiful new angel she's six pounds ten ounces Laura Michelle 
And then they have hundreds of people commenting and complimenting the, the baby. Oh, she's beautiful. She's a miracle. Oh, she's an angel. You named her correctly. My comment is usually just like, yeah, congratulations on the expansion pack. <laughs> Yeah, look who paid for the downloadable content. Look, look, look who ran out of anything to talk about with their spouse and decided to make their life's difficulty level jump from easy to freaking nightmare in a nine-month period. And this doesn't go over well. Um, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Go recently, and I've just been walking around town mile after mile, block after block, and I still can't find my father's love. Um, I think it's an in-app purchase and I need $4.99 um, I think we've had the cure for COVID-19 all along and I think the cure was present back in the spring and summer all you had to do was go to a playground and find one of those long steel all metal playground slides with no turns whatsoever that we grew up with that whenever the sun remotely touched it reached 9,000 degrees <laughs> because that thing could burn away all diseases and plagues and guilt and, and the sins of your ancestors and it worked. Um, prior to... Uh, COVID-19, I, I went over to the movie section at Best Buy and I noticed they were selling the first four paranormal activity movies uh, sold together um, and they were being sold as the white people have problems to variety pack. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, hey they, they, they threw in a free copy of Dunkirk and Braveheart. This was really nice of them. This was, <laughs> as, a, as a Caucasian, I should buy this. Um, I used to like astrology until I met someone who actually took it seriously. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, I, um, I, I think I've been productive during the pandemic. I, I ran across this uh, episode, of, an old episode of Lassie that was directed by MC Escher. And in it, a well falls into Timmy <laughs> and keeps falling, <laughs> keeps falling, and keeps falling because Timmy is infinite. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I'm really excited about the idea of the Harriet Tubman $20 bill. I, I love the idea of it. I like the design of it. Uh, uh, I like the energy and the passion behind it. And I'm really excited about the plan they have to launch it. They're going to release it in the deep south first, and it's going to slowly make its way north. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll find him in the cities. Um, okay. Uh, thank God this isn't in person. My car would be on fire. Um, <laughs> I, I personally can't wait to visit the nearby duck pond tomorrow because, hey, free duck. Um <laughs> just take them um i like i said i've been product pre-productive over the course of the pandemic uh i invented a new board game it's called self-analytical hippos and in it the hungry hungry hippos have to look inward and ask why they're eating so much <laughs> and it's really not selling well um <laughs> I have a friend and she she's got her life together more than I have my life together. Um, and she posted something on Facebook like she's she's married. She's got a beautiful home. She's got a beautiful family, uh, husband, kids. Good job. Um, and she mentioned something she mentioned on Facebook. She posted, oh, my God, I just found my 11 year old son looking at porn online. You guys, what do I do? You guys, what do I do? And I was thinking about this. I know exactly what I would do if I found my 11 year old son or daughter looking at porn online. I would respect their decision. I would set aside a, a private space for them to do this with, with the computer. I would print out a three page, double sided, single space list of tested and functioning adult URLs. And I would make sure that that computer was attached to the slowest functioning dial-up modem I could find. <laughs> because my pain from the 90s should be felt by my children. Just the pain and the loneliness and the tears and the chafing. Anyway, um, how am I doing on time? You got about a minute and a half. Oh, God. I wasn't planning on this. All right. <laughs> See you. I, I was told to keep it squeaky clean, so... Um, that, all right. Um, yeah. Uh, 
I... <laughs> oh god the clean thought the clean stuff um i i got broken up with recently and like the thing is like the way we break up with each other these days it's terrible because nobody you know thanks to the internet nobody breaks up in person in, anymore and uh and i was thinking about this um and it's it's like you're you're dating someone for four or five months and you think, oh, everything's going great. And then they just disappear off the face of the planet. And, and you don't know what happened. You don't know what you did wrong. And what I've also been doing recently is I've been watching the old PBS Civil War documentary on Netflix. And, you know, if you watch it, those people wrote amazing letters to each other, you guys. So what I want to do is I want to start an old timey breakup letter writing service. And I've got some sample letters, so you guys can tell me if these are any good or not. So here we go. <laughs> My dearest Emmeline, the war rages on. And though I've lost both legs and an arm, I care not about these things, as I found another. A pole dance class instructor who looks amazing in yoga shorts, wears multiple hipster scarves, and has the most meaningful of tattoos at the small of her back. My dearest Jonathan, I pray that the issue of slavery, which is the only thing this terrible war is about, is resolved quickly. In addition, I have found the most brilliant of auto mechanics. He has a suspended driver's license, really wants to fight his father, and whose multiple neck tattoos will ensure a lasting love for together with no conflict whatsoever as neither of us are religious, but we are both spiritual. <laughs> Dara, my love for you is deathless. It binds me to you with mighty cables that nothing short of omnipotence can shatter. Yes, with deepest regrets, I inform you that I've found, fallen for another. Your coworker, Marianne, who takes and posts far hotter pictures of herself on Instagram. <laughs> anyway, that's my time. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> Take care. Oh, long, keep it going for Chris. May the force be with you. <laughs> A multi-genre comedy threat, Chris Berelick. Uh Check him out online. They have shows online, in person, eventually. It's going to be amazing. Thank you. He'll have lots of time to do it because those lightsabers will never need to go to college. <laughs> That's the good point. That's the upshot. And if I can make one woman understand that as she enters my bedroom, I'll be okay. It's also mood lighting. Look, it's multifunctional. Oh, I don't they understand. hum. They hum, man. They hum. <laughs> like I said, if I can find one lady who understands this, I'm the the bloodline will not end. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Are you ready for your headliner? Tonight, I'm so excited uh, about this comic. Uh, she uh, is a science writer, a stand-up comic, obviously. Uh, she does voice acting. She has a podcast. She works for the NATHA. Na NATHA. She works for the NATHA Earth Observatory. <laughs> it was going so well till then, wasn't it? <laughs> she works for NASA's Earth Observatory. Uh, follow her on Twitter. You can watch her TED Talk. She does science-themed comedy shows here in DC, uh, but virtual, like all of us now, I am so, so happy to welcome Kasha Patel. Yeah. Kasha. Woo! Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for that introduction that I wrote. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Almost did a flawless job. <laughs> uh this is so fun i have this is an extremely nerdy show like a geeky i've got I, this might be the nerdiest show that i've done and i run nerdy shows so, like this is really really topping it oh hi neil you saw me at goddard a few months ago glad to see you here i don't know if i was uh the reason you attended or if this is just a happy coincidence but always nice to see other people back um, my name is Kash Patel, as Dave said. It's not to be confused with Kash Patel. And if you don't know who that is, uh, just Google him 
and then write out all your opinions and then tweet them at me because that's the only place. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're for him or against him and nobody apparently can read twitter handles that well <laughs> but no. Uh, it is a foreign name, which I always think is uh, fun because foreign names always have the prettiest meanings. Like uh, my mom's name is Shoba, which literally means beauty. My brother's name is Covey, which means poet. I found out that my name, Kasha, also has a meaning. It is a type of buckwheat. <laughs> yeah. uh, my ex-boyfriend actually found that out and had to break up with me. <laughs> Gluten-free. <laughs> when he told me that buckwheat is already gluten-free, I'm like, oh my gosh, that makes that breakup so much worse. <laughs> uh, 2020 and a little bit of 2021 has been pretty interesting, I think, for everyone. It's been the understatement of our lifetimes. Uh, but, you know, last year was weird because there were certain days where I feel like the only productive thing I did was just like eat and sleep. And I was getting kind of down about that until I realized that is what 90% of the animal kingdom does regularly. <laughs> so I'm performing at an average level for a grizzly bear. <laughs> 2020 was the year that I learned that a lack of time is not the reason that I'm a bad cook. <laughs> 2020 was the year uh, where we all watched a lot a lot of tv uh, i learned that if hbo is where all the hot new tv shows go then hulu is a hospice center <laughs> like i thought the mindy project was canceled but no it just moved to hulu and then it got canceled <laughs> Uh, my goals for this year is just to be uh, more productive than COVID. Like right now, COVID has <laughs> produced two variants. And right now I've produced uh, two YouTube videos. So <laughs> really trying to rush that third one out. So at least I can beat COVID at something, you know? <laughs> uh, I am working on a book though, which is very exciting. I finally have time to start a book. It's gonna be the great, uh, the next great American novel. Uh, I'm actually publishing um, all of my draft emails anonymously. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of angst in there, but I think people will really resonate with it. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. <laughs> um, I have been quarantining um, with my dog, which has been great. Do we have any dog people here? I was like going into oh, yes, and then people sometimes show their dogs. Any dogs in the crowd? No, I like how Tom and Maggie are like visibly like no, no, <laughs> <laughs> cats. Cats, 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 yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> hey, that's not a dog. <laughs> I, I don't know who sold you that, but that is not a dog. <laughs> He's hypoallergenic. Ah, uh, there we go. That is very cute. Grogu. Who ever thought that they should have really like A-B tested that of like, do we just want to call it uh, Baby Yoda or Grogu? Because I mean, Grogu was probably the worst part of the Mandalorian, that name. <laughs> The rest was fantastic. It got me through 2020. Fantastic show, but Grogu, uh, it's like a curse word now. And I feel bad for <laughs> bringing that energy onto this comedy show. So I'm so sorry. Uh, I do have a dog. He's very cute. Um, he is a rescue. Uh, he rescued me from having a large bank account. <laughs> he knows that money is the root of all evil. Uh, I do think he likes teleworking with me though, because like I'll be on my laptop and then he'll be on my laptop. And I realized that my dog is like the Kim Kardashian of computer technicians. His butt creates a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> like if he had a job in IT, he would get promoted so fast with all the new features that he uncovers, but he doesn't have a job because he's unmotivated. <laughs> a lot of people say you should get a dog if you're nervous about having children. Like it's like a good ease, way to ease into having children. Uh, not if you're a bad dog owner. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think I'm more afraid of having children now after having my dog. Uh, like now I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, is my kid just going to go around trying to bite everyone for the next 50 years? Like I'm going to get a call from like their HR manager in like 20 years being like, ah, your son bit Franklin again. And I'm just going to be like irrationally defending him being like, well, Franklin was reading the PowerPoint slides verbatim. He was asking for it. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you be doing that? <laughs> Uh, I do think that quarantining with a dog is a lot like seeing two people editing a Google Doc. And then <laughs> both you, you're like, huh, it feels like someone else is in here with me, but <laughs> no, it's just me and then another version of me. <laughs> uh, my boyfriend does not like that joke at all. Uh, <laughs> I'm also quarantining with him. So that tells you how I feel about him. <laughs> As of last year, we actually got engaged, which was very exciting. Ooh, uh, ooh. Thank you. Um, he's actually an accountant, so it's cute. He calls me his fiance and I call him my finance. So yeah, <laughs> pandemic has hit us hard. Um, I do like fighting with him and I know that sounds really weird, but hear me out. Um, he uh, actually dropped out of law school, which means that he's really good at starting an argument, but doesn't know how to win one. <laughs> And I studied chemistry, so I'm like really good at getting a reaction out of him. <laughs> uh, both of us are nerds. Um, my engagement ring is actually a DNA double helix is the band. You should check it out on my Instagram. It doesn't look very good when I show it to the camera, but my Instagram is Kasha Blanca. And uh, you can actually see the bands. And it's actually kind of fun to be like with a nerd. It's kind of fun. It's fun to be here. Um, I could tell I was a nerd growing up. Uh, because I never had to say no to drugs. <laughs> uh, I actually used to call my iPhone charger mitochondria because it was the powerhouse of my cell. <laughs> uh, I did take a computer coding class when I was young, though, um, which was pretty incredible because that means I learned the importance of a missed period long before I ever hit <laughs> <laughs> It was worthwhile for many uh, It wasn't cool being a nerd growing up though. Like now it's cool because we like own stuff. Uh, but back then uh, it wasn't cool. So I tried to change my image and do something that would make me look really cool. Uh, like um, I actually decided to play a sport. I played ultimate Frisbee. I played the position of treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> I did very well. And I, thank you. Uh, but I do remember growing up, my mom's biggest worry for me was that I was going to come home pregnant. My mom thought I was way more popular than what I actually was. Uh, because for fun, in high school, I actually created a Scrabble club. <laughs> The two members were me and the computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm not getting pregnant. <laughs> I can't even spell pregnant on the Scrabble board. <laughs> one too many letters and the probability of you getting a P, a G, and two N's is one over 203,000. <laughs> Which was also the probability of me getting laid in high school. <laughs> it worked out for my mom. Uh, I'm actually at my parents' house right now, um, and which is great because I actually found my old Scrabble Club t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> you would just get one of them. So it was great. The front says, uh, the only game where I can prove coined is a word. A coin is an exterior angle of a wall. And then on the back, we have the little FSHS, my high school Scrabble board there. And then on the side, uh, we made a pyramid so if anyone else ever wanted to join the club, we could rank everybody. But I was always the top called the Aura. And you'll notice how it's detached from the rest of the pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because I wanted to make it that even if I lost many, many games, I could never be dethroned off the top of the pyramid. So I was 
the aura and uh yeah i wonder why i have many friends in uh, high school now <laughs> <laughs> like that who wouldn't want to be around that yeah um dave did mention oh no Oh no. Okay. I have very limited amount of time and I did want to go through a PowerPoint. Dave, do I have time to do Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, so Dave did mention that I do work at a small startup called NASA and <laughs> <laughs> it's always interesting how you have to tell people this information, right? Because uh, if you want to be honest, like I say, I work for NASA. If I want to be mysterious, oh. I say I work for the government and uh, <laughs> If I want to bore people, I say I work for a travel agency. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like watching a lot of sci-fi. Like I love Star Trek because it's like, oh my gosh, is this what it's like if NASA had more funding? Like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Uh, but a lot of people like to come up to me and ask me questions about um, robots specifically because they're like, oh, robots. Do you think robots are going to take over the world? And I actually um, recently <laughs> pulled out a dirty glass from my dishwasher and thought, huh, not this one. <laughs> 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 I did get a robot vacuum though. And uh, it was weird because my robot vacuum actually knocked over a table, broke a glass, and then cleaned it up. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, is this robot showing remorse? All <laughs> 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 the Terminators, I got the empathetic one. <laughs> uh, I do think it's weird what scientists are creating robots to do, though. Like, they're creating robots that can, like, dance salsa and play soccer. And I'm thinking, are these scientists just assembling friends at this point? <laughs> I don't understand. Um, I did say that I was, uh, I do like a lot of sci-fi, um, reading a lot of robots and sci-fi. Uh, and I figure that this group would appreciate that. Um, am I screen sharing right now? Not at the moment. Not right now. Oh, then <laughs> I just like went and presented it without actually pressing screen share. Um, <laughs> all right, let us screen share. So I made a little presentation to help people uh, bring, okay, now can you see everything? Yep. Okay, perfect. So I made a little presentation just kind of describing, you know, robots and sci-fi and how they actually, um, some of them do exist or we have our own versions here on Earth. So um, hopefully there are some Isaac Asimov fans. Um, he was actually used to be a chemist also. And you'll know that he had three laws of robots. Some of this might be repetitive for you, but first law was a robot may not injure a human being through inaction or allow a human being to come to harm. Second law, a robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings. Uh, third law, a robot must protect its own existence as long as um, it does not conflict <laughs> with the first or second laws. Um, well, I actually recently found out um, that the Elon Musk has his own three laws of robots. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the first raw law is a robot may <laughs> not injure a human being through inaction or allow a human being to join a union. <laughs> uh, second law, a robot must obey the orders by human beings unless it, uh, uh, the orders are given by OSHA. <laughs> <laughs> and the third law, a robot mm. must protect its own existence and its creator in case the SEC keeps asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a lot of people like to ask me, do robots and popular media actually exist on Earth? A common one that I get is Skynet. Is Skynet actually exist? And for those, I mean, I'm sure you all know, but as a refresher, Skynet was this uh, this kind of, it, like, it was unbeatable. Like, no matter how much you tried taking this artificial system down, it just, like, kept coming back no matter how hard you tried. And we actually do have something like Skynet. Um, and it is actually the uh, Bachelor and Bachelorette. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wally, oh, everybody loves Wally. <laughs> Wally was tasked with picking up all human garbage and making everything a happier and cleaner place. Uh, we have something like that. It's called uh, Marie Kondo. <laughs> <laughs> R2D2, everyone's favorite robot. Just so cute. It was always the comedic relief. It didn't really have that much of a big role in plot lines, uh, but we actually do have R2D2 here on Earth. It's called Danny DeVito. <laughs> oh. Uh, and Westworld, uh, my last one. Westworld is so interesting. Um, 
Westworld is this place when you enter, uh, you have all these rich people just going off like their perverse pleasures and you can't really tell when you walk in who's robot and who's human. And we actually have something like that here on earth called uh, CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> trying to leave <laughs> i don't know where i am <laughs> return to meeting okay okay well that's the end of my presentation so i don't really know how to get back am i back no <laughs> no <laughs> should i just replace you yeah just replace me <laughs> exactly how i wanted this set to end <laughs> YouTube, I'm much more oh, wait, technologically can... savvy there. Oh, I can I can manual override. Manual override never works. <laughs> I've, if we've learned anything about the Star Trek universe. <laughs> I don't even know why it's in the manuals. Anyway, listen, everyone, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. This was a fantastic show. Uh, thank you for coming. Thanks to Farpoint for having us. Uh, your comics tonight have been Danny Rydell, Chris Barilic, Kasha Patel, and I've been your host, Dave McGowan. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of the okay. con. Uh, live long and prosper. If anybody has suggestions for comedy classes, please put them in the chat. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what to do with my hands. Neither do I. Uh. <laughs> go, everyone, go. Oh, I no, say go no, to a different don't panel, go. but. Um, does, does anybody have any comedy nice. classes to suggest to go take? Um, or to avoid? Probably <laughs> some good virtual classes you could take. Yeah. If you want some some simple ones that aren't too expensive, you can do flappers in LA, but. Um, Maybe wait till the pandemic's over with. Oh, no, there's great online classes. Yeah. Um, comedy therapy. If you are military or military adjacent, Basically, if, if you qualify for USAA car insurance, yeah. uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend the Armed Services Arts Partnership, uh, ASAP, ASAP.org. They're getting ready. If you hurry, I think you can still apply for the spring programs. Uh, they do some one-off seminars, but they also have a six-week stand-up comedy boot camp and other thing boot camp, like improv and, uh, and other storytelling, yeah. things like that. Um, I wrote that DC Improv is doing virtual classes. They're doing a ton of different things, improv, sketch, stand up. Um, DC Improv is great. I mean, I know the people who teach the classes and they're very much in the scene and they are constantly improving and working on their own stuff and okay. they do national tours. Um, the good thing about being with the DC Improv, especially if you're local is uh, they have like special student showcases. So, I mean, they kind of bring up their own, but all places are like that. Like, if you do second city, it works the same way. It's like, they all take from their own. It's just, that's the part of comedy I don't like. It's a little bit incestuous on like, if you give me one money, we'll just like keep promoting you, but you have to give them money, but it, you know, you learn stuff. Right. I started off as a background extra on House of Cards. I'm taking some acting classes. Oh, cool. Showed up, nice. showed up on true crime shows. <laughs> and every time in an acting class, they said, you need to take a comedy class. Like that happens at the beginning of every <laughs> class. So, so I asked my acting teachers, they don't teach comedy, but one of them says, well, I'll, I'll figure something out. But yeah, so. huh. but yeah, DC improv. Yeah, I live yeah. right in Baltimore, DC. And it's just sad that we have to do all these conventions virtually now. But. Are you going yeah. to virtual comedy classes? There are virtual comedy classes, so you can take advantage. I mean, the, the nice, yeah. <clears throat> to me, the nicest part of, of not necessarily being a comedian, but someone who loves comedy is that I can catch all these shows all over the oh. world, really, yeah. um, that I would never, like, you know, there's all these great shows in LA and you go, ah, darn. Uh, but, you know, almost everything's online. Yeah. No, but thanks for hosting this. Thanks for coming. This is uh, so this is our second year that we've done this, uh, yeah. and, and hopefully, there will be more. Well, my whole con experience for last year was ninety minutes at Farpoint. I had a cold, so I canceled my hotel room, and on Saturday night, I should, I forced myself to show up for like ninety minutes. I didn't realize that was going to be my whole con experience for the whole twenty twenty <laughs> in person. But. Yeah.
and I, I help do stuff for shore leave also, which is, I don't know if that's going to be virtual this year too, because the vaccines won't be out in force by shore leave is usually the weekend after July 4th. So. Yeah. I still have my fingers crossed. I want to meet Dennis Lawson. Gosh, darn it. And my uh, friends at Farpoint, someone dragged me on the dance floor and then I got into this Battlestar Galactica group. That's what's Battlestar Galactica. Oh, entry. I noticed. I noticed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so they dragged me to some place called Dragon Con. And I guess with the pandemic, oh. you can't have 70 <clears throat> or 80,000 people in the same space. Mm -hmm. We'll see what they do with Dragon yeah. Con or World Con was supposed to be in DC this year. And I, I don't know. know what's. Yeah. And I've never been to a World Con. I have to get a, I have to get a BSG uniform. Yeah, we have this for a while. I used yeah, to belong but, to the Colonial Fleet, which is yeah, the, I, a really yeah. Great well, we started the group. Colonial Fleet, so there's a split off called the Thirteenth Fleet. If you want to join the Thirteenth Fleet, I can. Is that like a DC area? Yeah, it's a DC. It's it's well, it's it's remnants of the Colonial Fleet that okay moliated, I guess, or it's there was it, a yeah. there was a happening that I was not privy to. I I went away for a while and came back and yeah shenanigans had ensued. All right, so you're but, Dave uh, Cohen. Okay, I'll try to look you up somehow. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because there's a group, and then they're talking about going to um, Caprica, which is what Vancouver, in the May mm -hmm. of next year, and just hang around town. I've been to Vancouver twice, but changing airplanes or coming off a cruise. So we'll explore, and then maybe there's there's uh, active studios we can go tour or something. But that'd be so, great. Yeah, so Vancouver's been on my list. Mm -hmm. So you're on Facebook somewhere? Or I, can I am. Go... So if you look up Dave McGowan Comedy, you can find me. Okay, okay. I'll on find the you. Then, Facebooks. Yeah, and then we can invite you to the 13th Fleet because that's what they created. Because the, the Colonial Fleet is kind of the Admiral sitting up in Canada somewhere with the Vice Admiral. And they're just, <clears throat> we stopped even marching in Dragon Con Parade. So. That's a shame. Yeah, well, the last time only half of the people showed up that said they were. But <laughs> but Dragon Con is a whole different experience, too. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That I was, never, yeah, that was crazy. I've never been to Comic-Con in San Diego. Comic-Con in San Diego is another level of craziness that um, I haven't. I haven't well, had, just getting a hotel is the hardest part of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I have a legacy room for Dragon Con. It took me five years to get a legacy room at the Hilton. So a lot of us <laughs> hang out in the Hilton because it's far. It's right off the uh, the main atrium of the Marriott where they have the cosplay like crazy in the atrium. Yeah. Just yeah, talking about these other conventions make me sad. Be we'll get back to it you know it's okay. a pause yeah it is so but okay i'll look at dc improv that's something to, but it's funny every time you take an acting class that you should take a comedy class like okay i don't even realize what i'm saying is funny but some people <laughs> <laughs> well it'll be great and the dc scene is mm -hmm. uh it's it's nice it's, it's a lot enough. more it's a lot more open than it was even like you know three four years ago Really? Okay. Yeah. So, and there's also the social media stuff that you can, there's something called clubhouse. Have you heard of clubhouse? I it's have. Part, and you have to get invited to it. So if we hook up, I'll maybe give you an invite and it's about who, you know, you start following people. There's famous actors on clubhouse. And then there's people doing all sorts of all day, like every day they do breakfast, the actors breakfast, and maybe you'll get leads. You'll get ideas of what to do or take classes. It'd be good. Yeah. But, it's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of work. But I support the FAA, so I'm on 40 Zoom meetings or go to go to go to meetings. Or uh, it's like I'm on. I I through this pandemic, I've probably been in 500 Zoom meetings in the last year or so. so that's yeah. that's a bit much. And um, is the lady from Manassas still on there? I don't know if she's. I think Kasha left. That's oh because oh. I found out the FAA has to give NASA authority to fly through the national airspace. So I didn't know that NASA answers <laughs> to the FAA in some way. Yeah, Everyone answers to airspace. somebody under some weird circumstance. That's how it works. Right. So, this, this but I want to get some space, I want to get some Space Force contracts with the FAA. Okay. Oh, like, space Force. Well, yeah, well this, this better be their uniform. I was right. Why didn't they just call it Starfleet? Oh, I, I think it's, I think Paramount wouldn't let them probably. <laughs> well, Netflix has a show called Space Force, and the U.S. Space Force got upset that there was a Space Force already on TV. So there's right. like, you know, well, they copyright didn't copyright the, the yeah. DoD didn't copyright the name, and then Space Force, the show, copyrighted the name. Right. The yeah. So. Ever. Well, and they're the they're the Space Force, not the U.S. Space Force. So then the U.S. That's can right. you know put through. But I have U.S. Space Force outfits with a group on facebook that we can't wear them because there's no conventions but we wear them <laughs> but, well maybe um, shore leave maybe if yeah maybe, maybe we'll, shore. we'll get lucky 
Well, maybe. the vac- yeah, but the vaccines have to be out and working long enough for, or maybe yeah. have a reduced convention. Well, but these conventions like shore leave, you know, even if they're at fifty percent, they're not going to make money, so or they'll lose money. So we need Julian Bashir. Yes, Whoa. Julian. Oh my gosh. But um, and I don't know if anybody here has been on some of the cruises. We don't want to do cruises during pandemic, of course, but there's comedy on the cruises, I assume. So there's all sorts of them. there's well, regular cruises there are. Like the Star oh. Trek. I've never done the Star Trek cruise. Yeah. So I don't That's know. My if... dream is to do comedy on the Star Trek. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be I think that would be a good thing for you guys to yeah. get on a Star Trek cruise because we do gotta... um we do the Joko cruise, which is more of a musical thing. Um, yeah. which they do they bring they invite a couple comics, um, professional comics, I should say. And okay. then uh it's really like a con on a boat because there's official events at certain times, usually in the evening, but then the rest of the day is just filled by all of the other people on the cruise doing cool stuff. So I run a couple of open mics. We have a couple of like comedy, you know, comedians on boats getting brunch kind of thing where we just Mm -hmm. sit with people and um, it's a lot of fun, but yeah, I would love, I'd love to, you know, like go on a, Especially the Star Trek cruise. Can you imagine doing this show on the Star Trek cruise? Yeah, that would be great. Um, <laughs> I found you. I think All right, I found Danny, you. We're going to work on this. This is our. If I could speak we... freely in front of Jonathan Frakes for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I saw Jonathan Frakes at a convention and he was looking for another friend. I'm walking through the autograph area wherever I just talked to him. And he says, You know where so and so is? And I look at him and said, I don't know. I'm just here for you. And he just got this big <laughs> smile on his face. It's like sucking up to yeah, Jonathan Frakes. But I, I fa- yeah. yeah, I did. I did do the Picard thing the last time I was on the Joko cruise, which Will Wheaton normally attends. And thankfully, he he did not. OK, so I didn't have to do that in front of. Will oh, Wheaton. oh, yeah. Will Wheaton. Like, Shut up, Will. OK, someone I was on a chat room where they have is their last name was Wesley. And he was just like and I think I said, shut up, Wesley. Or there's a thread on Facebook. And someone was complaining about a bunch of things. And so was the Wesley character. So I just said, shut up, Wesley. And everybody else in the thread thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I was watching a documentary about the the child actor in Flight of the Navigator. And mm. apparently he was originally offered the role of Wesley Crusher. And yeah. in the interview, his tone was just kind of like, thank goodness I was so strung out on heroin at the time I couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Well, then, have you seen Wesley's or um, I, the actor's story about meeting William Shatner? And then he makes it into a comedy no. skit about effing, eff, effing William Shatner, okay? <laughs> William Shatner just treated him like, treated him like some dipshit ensign. Or he's like, acting it's like, it's like, it just, it just, there's, there's a whole thing about, like, if you look it up, like, um, I just found it. I just sent you a, a Facebook friend invite, Dave. And okay, I'm Dave excellent. also. So. And then, well, then I don't know. I'm not an admin for the 13th fleet, but... I'll explain. I think it's open to anybody that was in the colonial fleet. So it's like automatic admission because awesome. one was, the, then they, the, the quorum, I don't know if you ever went on the quorum that was mm-hmm. a message board. They yep. just shut it down last year. So people created a discord channel for the 13th fleet. So That's you can get into that too. So it was, I mean, this is, you know, this is when BSG was still. Right. It's 10 years off. Out, the air. And uh, whatever year, um, was it Razor? The last of the movies came out. Yeah, Razor. Yeah. Um, it was the year that that uh, that Eddie almost came to the big fleet party at Dragon oh, Con. I don't oh, know yeah, because I've that. said I've seen him at fleet parties. Yeah, yeah. I've been... That was crazy. That was the first con he had ever gone to, and I oh, think really? he was just gobsmacked because yes. you can explain it, but it's hard to understand if you're a, a relatively normal serious right. actor. Right. Uh, and well, so he just he just had this like grin on his face. Michael Hogan walked around with a six under each arm for most of the evening. Uh, It was just, it was so much, it was so much fun to see them having so much fun. Right. And and Uh, when, so yeah, so. And Eddie Elmas came to like shore leave. So we asked him all these questions about that movie. He was teaching calculus to poor kids in East LA. Oh yeah. And he said, well, I've never had that many, I've I've never had that many questions about that movie. He said, well, we have a bunch of NASA Goddard and, NSA and other <laughs> IT people there. Okay. So we all had to learn calculus. So it's like, yeah. yeah. And so that's all what... right. So uh, we got to clear the room because we're okay. going to keep the tech people. Uh, there is discord. There is gather town. Oh, gather town. Uh, I'll be around. I'm just Dave on gather town. You'll see me. Okay. Um, but well, again, how... thank, thanks all of you for coming. Uh, I'm always pleasantly 
yeah. surprised and humbled when we, you know, I'm like, I bet they'd like nerdy comedy. I hope they'd like nerdy comedy. Oh God, please let them like nerdy comedy. And then right. you guys show up and I feel awesome. So thank you again for, uh, for supporting us and we'll be back next year. Oh, I, hope. Yeah, I hope to see you live next year. <laughs> Yes. Can you talk to people in Gathertown? Can you go up to someone in Gathertown yeah. and just chat yeah. with them or something? Like I tried yeah. to do that last night, but they were ignoring me. Some okay. people have the, their settings differently, but yeah, that's the the idea. And there's um there's rooms on Discord and things like that. But oh, I'll you're be around. Right. I'm I'm not probably gonna not log on tonight, but I'll be around tomorrow because there's a couple panels I want to check. If so. if you want to make an arrangement of you know like a meetup place on either of those those places um now while you while you're all here, uh, go for it. <laughs> But, yeah, but not everybody's in Discord. Not everybody's in Gather. I realize that's a problem. I know. <laughs> right. But okay. I'm going to go eat something, and I will see you around the universe, guys. And Dave. Yep. Thank you. Look, Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Thank brother. you, everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm on twice, so I have to go upstairs to like leave that room too. So. Yeah. <laughs> and Denny, did you shoot me your Venmo already? I think you did. Uh, no. I. Okay. I'll... Just well, email or text it to me. You got it. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. This is of been course. Awesome. It was Actually, lovely to have you. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.